those words that we love one another even as we love ourselves. We affirm the energy of peace for this world today. And we are channels of that divine peace. In this way, following the way which Jesus has taught, we give thanks to the Almighty Source. Amen, and so it is. Amen, and so we let it be. And now, please be seated. Thank you. Gosh, it's great to, we got a new, new pianist here. And it's kind of, the jazz is kind of happening over here. This is great. All right, so now here uh, we have the tradition of affirmations, and uh, we uh, strive to hold this in kind of a contemplative, prayerful sort of way as we say the uh, Unity Worldwide Ministries Foundation Statement together. Can you join with me in saying this, please? There is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life 
God of the good, omnipotent. Very good. And then we also, in like manner, have our own Unity Church of Ames affirmation. Please join with me in saying that, if you will. Through the Christ Spirit in us, we create a better church and a better world. So be it. All right, thank you. And so now then, we have David Word next uh, with our own uh, director of music <laughs> coming up to do that one today. Thanks to you. Oops, where'd you go? Oh, so you the, yeah, I'm sorry, I hit it down there. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. There it is. Found it. <laughs> okay, the word for today, words, is our healthy choices. And the affirmation is, I make healthy choices in all areas of my life. Let's repeat that. I make happy choices in all areas of my life. Today brings many opportunities to experience life in healthy and fulfilling ways. I listen for divine guidance as I consider choices, decisions, actions, and words. I wait for the still, small voice within. As I attune to God, answers come quickly. I trust the still, small voice for I know it comes from God. Regularly turning within in prayer, while tuning in to divine guidance I receive, helps me to nourish and support my health. I trust my inner wisdom to guide me in what to say and do, and how to live and interact with others in a healthy way. In all areas of my life, I trust that I am led toward what is best. In the silence, I receive inspiration and in trust, I listen. And from John 6, 35. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And the words for today are healthy choices. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sally Hannah, for that daily word reading. And now, you know, and that, that today it's kind of like oxygen way the positive. <laughs> oxygen way, yes. Anyway, the lesson now with Reverend Deb. Here you are. No. No. And often, 
reactionary, and what it produces in our parents is a resounding no in response. And then we learn that saying no is pretty complicated. It seems to have layers to it. Do you remember as a kid figuring out that it was worth it to go ahead and do it rather than asking permission? <laughs> and then deciding, okay, I'll take the consequences, whatever they might be, because I'd rather go ahead and do it and hear no than hear a no. Right? And we, we learn, and that comes under the rubric of I'd rather ask forgiveness than permission, right? It's one of those life lessons we get when we're little kids. The human experience of saying no comes with lots of confusing messages, right? Because we say no and our parents are not happy with us. And we get stuck in that place of making sure that no one says no to us before we proceed. We get stuck in that place of thinking that we have to have everyone's approval first. We have to have everyone's agreement, everybody's approval, we gotta keep everybody happy. Then we get stuck in that place of thinking, okay, I had by God better be right about this before we take any action. We had better be absolutely sure of what we're saying, doing, thinking, because if I'm not, it's gonna get a great big, no! It's gonna get an oops, 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 blooper time, I messed up, oh my god, oh what a mess. Busted, fired, ah, 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 right? You're wrong. Three strikes, you're out. No wonder we don't have to say no. No wonder we're a little bit gun shy about saying a no. But here's the deal, folks. The Mets may have lost the World Series, but do you think for one minute they regret being in that game? No, I don't either. I don't either. The Royals lost royally in 2014. They lost in a big way, and it only served to spur them on to that huge win in 2015. Did you all watch the game? It was a couple weeks, Sundays ago. It was worth staying up late for, wasn't it? Because the triumph of that yes was just incredible. Chris Foster called me on November 3rd, the day, a couple days after. The day they were having the big parade in Kansas City, he was so excited. All of Kansas City closed down, and he went to the parade with 800,000 other people in their blue Kansas City Royal colors, and everybody just, just went into the Power and Light District and celebrated this big yes, this big yes. And that is the most positive evidence of this energy of letting go, this energy of saying no, this energy of releasing. It does two things. It's consciousness cleansing and consciousness building. It does both. It cleans us out of the energy of defeat, the energy of dismay, discouragement, fear. Because letting go of a defeat like that one in 2014 that the royals had, had to happen before they could have this huge victory and celebration. If all they did was focus on how we lost, there's no way that they could get their head and their bats around the possibility of winning. And that's the purpose of our spiritual power of release. It really is a spiritual power that allows us to cleanse out what no longer serves us, what doesn't work for us anymore. And it's not a power we embrace very easily, right? Because I don't know about you, but if I have that blooper, I have that misspeaking, I have that one, you know, there can be 99 things that I did right that went really well, and I focus on that one lousy thing. Don't you? And you replay it over and over again in your mind, that one special thing that you didn't say or do or had at the right time. 
But the power of release is the power of finally letting go of that. Anyone in a performance type work, an athlete, a singer, a musician, has to play wrong notes. I mean, you, you just have to do that. And let go of your fear about it. Don't let the pursuit of perfection get in the way of excellence. We can do that. And when we're trying to be perfect, we just stumble over stupid stuff. The emotions of defeat, if you let it, will just swamp you. Whether you're a public speaker, minister, musician, doesn't matter. Those emotions of defeat, I can't, kind of lurks around in our consciousness and we get fixated on that one time it didn't work. That one time that I did it wrong. And then I get stuck into that little loser, you know, I just can't quite get it. And that doesn't serve us. That doesn't serve us. The spiritual power of release frees us from attaching to that. It really does free us from getting stuck in that. Brene Brown is one of my favorite authors, and her description, she has a description of what she calls mid-life unraveling. Mid-life unraveling, right? We've all done it. I don't care how old you are. You've already done some kind of unraveling. And the unraveling is a time when you are challenged by the universe to let go of who you think you are supposed to be and embrace who you are. You let go of who you think you're supposed to be and embrace who you are. So I'm supposed to be nice. I know I'm supposed to be always sweet. I'm supposed to never be angry. Okay, the midlife unraveling brings that opportunity to let go of being who you think you're supposed to be and really embrace who you are. That's really true. That is a profound truth about our journey. But we don't always see it. Right? It's been going on all our life. Right? We let go when we're kids. We let go of little things because we want to be a big kid. But as we get it to be a bigger and bigger kid, we keep letting go. I have to confess, I did not really embraced the notion of release and let go until my late 30s, and I was having a midlife meltdown. This wasn't a crisis, this was a meltdown. My entire life fell apart. I didn't understand that if I practiced letting go in small steps and stages, I could get used to it. I could recognize it and embrace it. I really resisted it. I had this desire to hold on to everything I'd achieved and attained. I really wanted to hold on to it, right? The house, the big trophy house, the two kids, the two cars, the husband, the job, all of it, right? I can have it all. Hold on to it. Even if it was uncomfortable and it really didn't quite feel right, right? Every time I got in touch with that, it doesn't quite feel right. Something's not quite right here. Well, I have another glass of wine, or I go to the store, or I distract myself from that. Even if it felt like it was making do or settling for less, it was like wearing shoes that are really cute but too tight. Anybody bought shoes that are really cute but a little too tight, and you keep wearing them, hoping you can stretch them out and make them work? Right? Oh my goodness. You keep wearing them and getting blisters and thinking it's going to work, but it's not going to happen. But they're cute. I don't want to let go. A huge, huge part of my growth was learning to say no. It was a practice. It was a practice. I let go of the illusion that I had the perfect wife, the perfect husband, because he had to embrace who he really was. My first husband was a gay man. He didn't fit 
in this picture. It didn't fit puzzle pieces. He had to say no to, to not being his authentic self. And that meant a whole lot of no's. And then I had to learn to say no to being so damn codependent. <laughs> and all I thought I had to do was do anything to keep it together and keep it happy. Right? I remember the first time translated this codependency thing means <clears throat> I didn't have boundaries. If I went to a family gathering and somebody teased me in a way that didn't feel quite right, the first time I said, Uncle Frank, I don't think that's very funny. I'll tell you, my heart was beating really fast. I felt like the earth was going to move under my feet, and there would be a trap door that would just open and send me straight to hell, right? And I had violated a family protocol by calling out Uncle Frank for being obnoxious. That was one of my first practices of saying no. I don't like that. Oh, can't you take a little teasing? No, no, no. I had to learn to let go of people pleasing in small doses and make room for what I thought, what I felt about things. I had to really connect with that. I learned to say no and know that I could be wrong about it and change my mind. I found unity, and one of the things Charles Fillmore said that just was so wonderful to me is I reserved the right to change my mind. Which, when I took that in, said to me, I can say no, and I can be wrong about what I'm saying no to, and I can change my mind. Charles said it. <laughs> I have permission. I can say no and change my mind. I had to learn to just observe myself. I had to learn to say, um, to recognize the signs in yourself when you feel uncomfortable with something, right? Whatever tightness you feel, whatever uncomfortableness you feel, we all have that when we're just, this doesn't feel right to me. And I had to learn to say, Somebody wants an answer right away. That's my first clue that, hmm, stop. So I learned to say, you know, that is a really good question and it deserves a really thoughtful answer. So I need to take some time to think about it and I'll get back to you. Which is a wonderful way to say no and put a little space around it. And it gives you time to See where you really are with that, so that when the person is pressuring you, you can say, you know, it deserves a thoughtful answer. I'll get back to you. And if it's really important, they will get back to you. And by that time, you will have more clarity about what you want to say. So I have to begin to observe myself and, and not judge myself. Right? I, I had to give myself permission to mess it up and observe my moods without criticizing, allow for the yin and the yang, the dark and the light. Right? What I don't like, what do I like? My own imperfections. I had to learn that I could feel really good about things one minute and then really icky about them in the next minute and allow room for all of that. Allow it all to just be. My consciousness could hold it all. Because that's what the power of no does. It, it grows and creates consciousness. And my consciousness could hold all of that. I began to practice what the Buddhists call non-attachment. In unity, we call it a denial. Right? I'm going to hold that, but I'm not going to give power to it. I can hold both until I have clarity, but I'm not going to give power to it. Because it's really easy to attach to what I like and want more of that, and attach to just getting rid of what I don't like in my life. And I get, you know what? Neither of those is real. Because I had this illusion, I'm in recovery from, you know, having alcoholic parents. 
I will recover and I will never have a problem again. <laughs> that was a joke. That is not how it works. Because life keeps slapping you around. It keeps coming at you. It keeps bringing you joy. It keeps bringing you all kinds of experiences. And what you really want, what we all really want, is that place of peace that is inside the circle of fear. We want to get to that place of peace that doesn't feel pushed around by life. It's inside that circle of fear. It's in that Christ of us. And the power to get to that center is this power of letting go. Now, we've all let go of something. Everybody here, you've let go of a major. I know you have. We've all let go of something, right? And so, on the count of three, I want us to say, yay, God. One, two, three. Yay, God. One more time. One, two, three. Yay, God. Because we did it, and we know how to do it. And we know how to do it and go on. It's through the, the power of Christ in us. It's a two-step dance. It's kind of, should we the positive? It's a two-step dance. Because the first step is letting go, the consciousness cleansing. And the second step is to invite in the yes. Invite in the good. Invite in, because nature abhors a vacuum, right? Spirit wants to fill us with the good stuff. Now, you've heard of people, you let go of alcoholism and you take up another addiction, sugar. Lots of people have cross addictions, right? So we don't want that. We don't want to fill it with something else that's negative. We don't want to attach to that. So we accentuate the positive and we pull in our good. When we make a space for it, Spirit wants to hand it to us in a big way. So the second step in the dance is our capacity to say yes. When we can say no and mean it and make it stick, we have just increased our capacity to say yes and receive our good. We cleanse our consciousness so we grow our consciousness. <coughs> So that if we did win the lottery, we wouldn't feel compelled to give it all away because we didn't deserve it. We grow our consciousness. That spiritual power of letting go and letting God is what helps us do that. It works when you work it and you live it. And it's very very powerful. That's why it's at the end of the 12 powers. Because it takes a lot of revving up all of our powers to be able to really let go and not say, take that. I want to let go, but then I take it back. It takes a lot. I want to close with a blog post and it's dated 11-4. I wrote this talk before I went to Texas because I knew when I got back I wouldn't have time. And it's from Unity Minister Reverend Temple Hayes. She is in Florida. And I met her at the Parliament of the World Religions. Actually, I had met her before that. She's a very dynamic speaker, very dynamic woman. Um, really, really enjoy her energy. Here's what she says about this process. We are always dying, letting go of the old, on the spiritual path. We are always dying on the spiritual path and bringing forth the new. We are always waking up. We're always being reborn. It is a constant change and transition that is occurring in our lives on an ongoing basis. We are resurrecting from the old paradigm of who we think we are and into more of the heightened conscience, consciousness of who we came here to be. Siddhartha, the Buddha, did not wake up being shielded to real, authentic life as a human being. He saw what was real to others and was guided to understand the way of suffering 
and of peace so he could sit in both realities. Every day we hear stories that are beyond shocking. And within many of us, great thinkers, lies the solutions. This is our quest as truth teachers to live in the absolute and the relative. People say, how do I get to where I need to be? How can I be the light? And the answer is the natural you, the Christ consciousness you. <coughs> that consciousness is lying dormant, ready to shine more light in the world, and your part is to let go of the old in order for, for you to live fully into this new reality. A sacred healer can only heal to the level of his or her awakening. How you sit in your life, how you view the world, old habits that you have, ways of treating your body temple must resurrect into a more natural and higher form of being. You are now awake. Therefore, acting as if you are still sleeping will only cause hardship in your life and you'll remain uncomfortable in your body, in your life, and in your relationships. So my invitation is to practice the art of saying no so that you are empowered to say yes with a spiritual punch. Let's meditate on that. Go into it, bless you. From you I receive, to you I give. Because this is, this is the flow of life. <coughs> the energy of life. <laughs>
all lack, all sense of greed and needing to hoard anything. And opens us to receiving all of our good. for all of those behaviors and patterns that you let go of. Acknowledge the power of release at work in your life. The power of spirit. Acknowledge it with a silent thank you, God. Sing once again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 